Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we got an awesome little gaming PC going together here today. And, you know, in the past, I've done a lot of builds on the channel, but I'd say the last 10 builds have all been AMD. But that's all going to change with this one because Intel has recently released their 11th gen line. And in this one, we're going to be using the all new i5 11600K. I've been really wanting to get my hands on this to do a build with. And I was finally able to round all the parts up thanks to Micro Center. They were kind enough to send all these parts over for a build, so this video is sponsored by Micro Center. If you're looking to build a custom gaming PC right now in this weird time we're in, with PC part availability being very scarce and GPU prices skyrocketing, I would definitely suggest checking out Micro Center. As long as you have a store near you, there's a good chance you can find the parts you need to put your gaming PC together. And if you head over to their online custom PC builder, you can choose everything you need here. Basically, what you're going to do is choose your store, uh, Columbus, Ohio. You'll select your CPU from here. We'll go with one of the new Intel i5s. So we'll do the 11400. So we'll just select that. It's going to add everything up. And uh, like I showed you, you choose the store you want. If it's not in stock, it'll tell you it's not in stock. So they have 25 plus in stock here. We'll go with a motherboard. Let's do the MSI Z590. Get some RAM going. And one of the main parts we need right now for a decent gaming PC is the GPU. Limited stock, but they do have it in stock at the store that I chose. The RTX 3060. So you'll basically just go down the line, choose your storage, your CPU cooling, software. You can go with some extra peripherals if you want to. It's going to add it all up over here on the right hand side. And you can reserve it to go and pick it up at your local store. But if you're not sure on what parts to use for your custom build, you can always head over to the Micro Center community. Just join up here, ask a couple questions. There's a lot of nice people over here that'll help you decide on what to use for your gaming PC. So yeah, I think it's an awesome little tool that Micro Center offers, and that's exactly what I use to put this one together here. And basically what we're going with here is the new i5 11600K, 16 gigabytes of RAM, this MSI Z590 motherboard, and an RTX 3060. This should net us some really great gaming performance, but before we get into testing, we need to put this thing together. Alright, so as we're putting this thing together, I'll go over the parts used. For the motherboard, we have the MSI Z590A Pro. This is a great little motherboard, and I think it should be just fine, even overclocking this new 11600K i5 CPU. 6 cores, 12 threads, base clock of 3.9GHz, with a boost up to 49 Okay, so now that we have that CPU situated in the motherboard, it's time to turn our attention to the RAM. And for this, I went with 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. And as you can see, I did go with the white version because I wanted to keep a little bit of a black and white theme with this whole setup I'm going with. When it comes to my main storage, I opted to pick up a 1TB Enlin Platinum M.2 NVMe SSD. Read speeds up to 3400 megabytes, write speeds up to 1900. Not the fastest in the world, but yeah, this should definitely get the job done. And this MSI Z590 actually supports up to three M.2 NVMEs. We have three slots here, so if you want to add more storage down the road, M.2 storage, it'll be very easy. Now with this whole build, I'm also going to be adding a 2TB mechanical drive, and that's really just going to store my games. My operating system and most of the stuff that I use every single day will be running from this M.2. Now when it comes to cooling down this 11600K, I opted for the Kraken X53. This is an all-in-one liquid cooler, and I'm going to install it after I get my motherboard and everything else inside of the case. And speaking of the case, I went with the white and black version of the NZXT H510. Really nice looking case. I've been wanting to build in one for a while, I just haven't gotten around to getting my hands on one. But uh, yeah, I do like the design of this thing, and I've seen some reviews online. Seems like a solid choice. Time to prepare the case, so first things first, I always just throw my motherboard I.O. shield in here. I make sure it's going in the correct orientation when we lay this motherboard in here. Everything should line up. I've also checked that all of the standoffs in the case are in the correct location for the motherboard I'm using. And once I have all of that situated, I'm going to go ahead and lay my motherboard down. Now, usually when I'm using an air cooler, I have something to grab onto. This one's a bit awkward to get in here. But it should be pretty easy. Just don't put any pressure on your RAM. Make sure everything's lined up in the back. Make sure our standoffs in the case are lined up. And we can actually go ahead and grab the hardware that came with the case and mount the motherboard down. 
So I've got the motherboard situated in the case, we have our RAM, we have our CPU, now it's time to add our power supply, and for this I opted for a 550 watt Thermaltake Smart Power Supply. This is the BX1 550 non-modular, and I really wanted to keep with that white and black theme because this case is going to look really nice once it's done. So I opted to pick up some of these sleeved extension cables. Now it's not going to add any extra performance to this PC, but once it's done, it should look really nice and something like this. We have our main 24 pin plugged in. We also have our 8 pin up top for the CPU power. And these sleeve kits also come with an extension for your external GPU power. And since I'm using an RTX 3060, we only need a single 8 pin connector. Now, like I mentioned, to cool that 11600K off, I went with the Kraken X53. This should be more than enough, even if we want to do like a 5.1 gigahertz overclock on this thing. And uh, as you can see, this is a bit more involved than an air cooler would be. But if you follow the included instructions or just get online for an online tutorial, you'll have no trouble installing something like this. And this H510 case is actually perfect for something like this because they're both made by the same manufacturer, NZXT. On the front of the case, we have a removable bracketing system. Your AIO radiator and fans will mount directly to this, and then all we need to do is put it in with two thumb screws. And once I was finished with it, it looks something like this. I'll have the air being pulled in from the front going over the radiator. And I think it turned out really nice, but it's time to add the last component before cleaning everything up, and that's going to be the video card. For this, I went with the Zotac Gaming GeForce RTX 3060. It's going to fit right in here nice and neat, and if you did want to go with a bigger card, it will fit, but I think the 3060 is going to be perfect for a little system like this, and we'll check out the performance in just a second. I'll plug in my 8-pin GPU power, and once it was all said and done, it looks something like this, and I think it came out absolutely amazing. I've got everything buttoned up, and I really do like this black and white color theme here, and with those sleeve cables, it definitely does clean the whole system up. Now there's a few extra things I need to do here, like install Windows 10 Pro, but real quick, we'll boot it up for the first time. As you can see, we get that NZXT logo on that Kraken cooler. I think that looks pretty cool. And we also have that RGB RAM. Now looking at it here, I probably should have went with just some regular RAM, but this is going to work out just fine. It adds a little bit of color. Get that plastic film off. And once that's done, I just need to install Windows and get right into some testing. And after I got everything set up, the first thing I like to do is run some benchmarks. First up, we have Geekbench 5 with a single core of 1,691, which is really awesome. I love that single core score. And when we move over to Multi, it's a 7,944. And keep in mind, this is only 6 cores with 12 threads. Not bad at all. The next thing I ran was Cinebench R23, and we came in with a total multi-core score of 11,533. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks, first up we have 3 d Mark Firestrike with a 19,996, and finally, Time Spy with an 8,785. Looking really good, and this RTX 3060 is more than enough for 1080p gaming. First up, Forza Horizon 4, 1080p, Ultra Settings, I mean this thing is maxed out here, and I got an average of 148 FPS. Definitely playable, looks great here at those ultra settings, and it's super smooth. Next up, Fortnite 1080p Epic Settings. By the end of this, I had an average of 134 FPS. Uh, I was really hoping we could get an average of 144 out of this, and at high settings, I believe it would do it, but we're set at Epic. I always like to throw one of my favorite games in, and that's Skyrim. This is the special edition version. 1080p, maxed out, it's going to run at 60 all day. And out of the box, both of the Skyrim games are locked at 60. You can go into the config file and change it, but running this at 60 is fine. Kind of the same thing with Street Fighter V. Here we have it at 1080p, max settings, and it's running perfectly. GTA 5 1080p, very high settings, I got an average of 131 FPS, and you'll see it dip down below that every once in a while, but most of the time you're not in a firefight, and it's way above that average.
And finally here, we have Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, medium settings, with ray tracing set to medium. We can go up to ultra, but it's going to drop on down. The way it's set up right now, with those medium settings across the board, we can get an average of 64 FPS out of this, and this is just a really hard game to run. So overall, I think the build came out really nice. In the looks department and performance, this RTX 3060 paired with that 11600K definitely does a great job at 1080p. And if you wanted to do something like World of Warcraft or even Overwatch at 4K, you could definitely push it out of a machine like this. I do want to give Micro Center a big shout out for sending these parts over, and if you're interested in putting a build like this together, I will leave links in the description. And by the way, if you're interested in getting a free pair of Bluetooth headphones, Micro Center has a coupon deal going on right now. You'll get online, throw your email in, go to your local store, show them that coupon, and you'll get a free set of wireless headphones. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I will have one more video coming up on this build. I got a couple more things that I want to test here, especially emulation. But if there's anything else you want to see running on this system, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.